What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and today we're going to test out a real life off-roader and see how it holds up as it enters the game of SnowRunner. So without further ado, here is the Tatra T813. Hope you guys really enjoyed this. Please help support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting, and please share the video as well. So let's get into this. Roll the tape. Produced in Czechoslovakia by the Tatcher Company, the T813 is a unique military off-roader said to be able to pull trailers weighing 100 tons with its V12 diesel engine. This vehicle was produced from 1967 to 1982 until it was succeeded by the Tatcher T815. Finally, the Tatcher trucks make their way onto the simulation world of SnowRunner. In-game, the T813 is a powerful, fuel-efficient, stable, and dependable vehicle. On the flip side, it does have some causes for concern, of which we will cover throughout the video. At the end of the video, I'll give a conclusion based on the upsides and downsides we cover, so let's get into it. But before that, let's check out the base stats. The Tatcher T813 is classified as a heavy truck. It weighs 16.9 tons. In its stock configuration, it boasts a power to weight of A+, a durability of A+, fuel consumption B-, Fuel capacity is 380 liters or 101 gallons. It comes with the stock suspension. Its tires also come stock with a 50 inch mud tire. Its all wheel drive is switchable and its diff lock is switchable as well. All right, let's dive into the pros and cons of the Tatra T813. Like usual, bad news first. So coming in at the number one downside, versatility. One of the best things in SnowRunner is finding a great truck that can fulfill multiple roles. The Tatra, however, cannot support more than a few. As attachments go, it can use a saddle high, attach its roof rack, and lastly, a two-slot sideboard bed. Being that the game is based on hauling cargo mostly, the sideboard bed add-on is a help and it also can attach a hitch trailer for more space. Overall, the Tatra has limited versatility for driver use. Downside number two, it requires second season pass or the Tatra pack. While our number two downside is not based on lack of performance, players have to purchase either the season two pass or the Tatra pack to acquire this truck. I do have to mention that the vehicle is the most expensive in game at over $200,000. So because it's a paid DLC and also the most expensive truck in game, I felt this was a downside. Downside number three, weight and wheel spin. So far I haven't found any solid numbers on the vehicle's weight in game, but I believe it weighs 16.9 tons like the Dan 96 320. They share the same massive engines and the same power to weight with every single upgrade. Out of sheer observation, I noticed the Tatra's wheels spin quite a bit, but it does still climb through its gears with ease like the Dan as well. While 16.9 tons realistically is not that light, the vehicle seems balanced more toward power. I believe if the developers gave the Tatra a diff lock that was always on, like the real life Tatra, this downside would not be listed. Upon comparing performance values against the Zix 605R and the Dan, the Tatra just feels like it should be buffed to match its real life fame. Now for mitigating this wheel spin, it's easy, downshift to low plus and engage diff lock in deep areas to maintain progress. Downside number 4, front overhang. While selecting front bumpers for this vehicle in the garage, you can't help but notice a third of the vehicle's cab hangs over its front axles. The vehicle is pretty durable and its ground clearance is respectable as well, but in SnowRunner's new fast changing terrain areas, you're going to take engine hits. To ward off engine damage, try approaching terrain at a 45 degree angle. This will deny the front end contact on that driving surface for the purpose of regaining clearance. Downside number five no suspension options. When it comes to suspensions, the Tatra has a great one, and we'll talk about that here in a minute or so, but a lifted option would help our previous downside. I believe this would prevent engine damage and would also elevate the frame away from the mud and the snow. Usually, for unstable trucks, I would not suggest a lifted option, but for the Tatra, it would be a welcomed addition. And finally, coming in at downside number six, it's outperformed by its peers. I'll cover this topic a little bit more in my conclusion, but against vehicles with the same engine and comparable weight, the Tatra seems to be lacking. Pulling the rocket sleigh on the phase 4 map was a struggle. 
The whole time the vehicle required low gear and everything engaged just to keep forward movement. After passing the trailer off on Erska River to the Zix, the Zix had no issues whatsoever. On the Amandra map, when hauling the plane parts, the Dan outperformed the Tatra on the very same routes to and from that location. For this truck being an amazing real life off-roader, it needs to be represented better in SnowRunner. Okay, I know that seemed kind of harsh, but the Tatra does have some great upsides to counter the bad news. Here are the pros for the Tatra T813. Coming in at upside number one, the backbone and suspension. I would say the Tatra probably has the best suspension in the game. The odd but unique positive camber is actually due to the tubular backbone with a modular independent swinging half axles. This allows for each tire to receive differential locked power to each wheel and they act independently based upon terrain conditions. Throughout the video you'll see that this makes the vehicle's balance superb and it's able to maintain wheel to surface contact at all times. I must also mention that this truck was made with a centralized inflation and deflation system as well as a small wheel base. We all have been thrown off balance by rough terrain in the game of SnowRunner, but the Tatra is one of the best at resisting tipping which is our next upside. Upside number 2, Stability. Designs of the Tatra in real life had a configuration with wide profile tires. To piggyback on our previous upside, the stability is mostly attributed to the vehicle's backbone system that is unique to Tatra trucks. Phase 4 was the hardest difficulty where stability is concerned, but using the Tatra, I felt pretty confident that it would stay upright. To wrap this one up, I believe it's one of the more stable trucks in the game and a great choice to call on for rocky, bumpy conditions. Upside number 3, Power. Earlier I spoke of the Dan 96320 and we know that it possesses the strongest engine in the game shared with other notable vehicles like the Zix 605R. The 813 also shares this massive engine as well, but I wish it had more utility to challenge this amazing power. The engine's capability is evident from those prior trucks we just listed. With all that power to weight it does cause that wheel spin we talked about, but loading it up with weight will allow it to bite in better. This is the same strategy that I recommended for the Dan, but the Dan can use a sideboard semi-trailer to add 5 slots of cargo opposed to 2 slots on a vehicle sideboard bed which the Tatra has. The weight from 5 pieces of cargo is much more advantageous for grip than 2 pieces of cargo in a truck's bed. However, to wrap this one up, it's a powerhouse truck that can pull the largest cargo loads as seen in the video. Upside number 4, switchable all-wheel drive and diff lock. If you watch my reviews, you know I love the switchable all-wheel drive and diff lock features. Although I do wish this vehicle had the always-on diff lock, being able to have full control is a nice feature. Also, we can't forget about the fuel savings by turning off all-wheel drive on paved roads and light areas as well. Lastly, this vehicle is available at the start of the game with these features enabled as soon as drivers discover the garage. Upside number 5, Fuel Capacity and Economy. Like the Zix 605R and the Dan 96320, this vehicle gets really good economy that rivals the Azov 64131. I've seen data showing it has better economy, but I can't confirm that yet. That great economy coupled with its 380 liter 101 gallon fuel tank and roof rack makes the Tatra one of the better vehicles for long hauls and range. It's really hard to wrap my head around the largest engine in the game getting fuel economy numbers that those three vehicles get. However, I'm not complaining, I'm just appreciating those upsides. And finally, coming in at upside number 6, tires. Starting stock with a 50 inch mud tire is an upside that just cannot be left off the list. Most vehicles with a 50 inch mud tire have advantages in rough terrain. The Tatra with its backbone suspension powering large tires help this vehicle take rocks better than most and dredge through tough areas with loads. Alright so moving on to my personal ratings for this truck. For power I gave it a 5 well because it boasts the largest engine in the game and has amazing power to weight. For terrain navigation a rating of 4. Its backbone suspension helped this score but due to its wheel spin and its mud performance which isn't up to par to the elite trucks I think it prevented the 5. Due to the vehicle being an option at the start of the game with the switchable features and good balance, drivers would find this relatively easy to use. 
for aesthetics, I'm not keen on how it looks, but I don't dislike it either. Stability is one of the best in game due to its suspension system. An easy 5 here. Due to great fuel economy, super large fuel tank, and roof rack supplies, it's clearly a 5. For what the Tatra's peers can equip for use, this vehicle really doesn't have much to offer in the utility department. Due to having crazy power to weight, it struggles with grip somewhat until slowed with diff lock. Because of this, I felt it was an average score. So in conclusion, I don't want this review to be taken negatively, but I have to share my opinion based on performance observations. When I first heard of the Tatra T813 release, I thought to myself, well, this vehicle is the new Azov 64131, but on steroids. I also thought it would be a step below the mighty Zix 605R. From my vehicle testing and knowledge of the truck in reality, I feel there needs to be some type of remedy which I believe should be a buff. My humble suggestion would be to make the differential locking always on, which the vehicle has in real life, and more vehicle add-on options. I believe the Dan 96320 outperforms it due to the always on features. The Tatra TA13 has an extra axle and one would infer that it would bring more traction and performance over the Dan. On a lighter note, the Tatra is a great truck that's stable, fuel efficient, powerful, and fun to play. The special backbone suspension is genius engineering giving the Tatra a smooth ride over bumpy areas. I honestly use this vehicle a lot for those reasons we just listed. After watching some videos on what this truck can do in real life, I've become a fan. This review seems harsh, but I believe the Tatra should be represented better in the game. Regardless, don't let it deter you from using this excellent piece of machinery on your SnowRunner journeys. Try it out and let me know what you think. I hope this review gave you a fresh new perspective of the Tatra T813. Please smash the like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day, God bless and stay upright.